Scientific work and discovery is progressing at a breakneck speed, with new items of interest coming in from all areas of science happening each month. So here are 10 wide-ranging new scientific discoveries as of June of this year. Number 10. Plants get noisy when thirsty. Recent measurement of tomato and tobacco plants shows that plants have a tendency to emit ultrasonic clicks when they are low on water or if their stem has been severed. If you move the sounds to the range of human hearing, thirsty plants would sound something like rapidly popping bubble wrap. This is actually based on earlier research that showed that plants do emit ultrasonic sounds. But the question was, could that be detected from a distance, rather than the detector physically touching the plant? The answer was yes, and this opens up some interesting possibilities for agricultural efficiency. The clicking was interesting in that in ultrasound it was loud. If we could hear in that range, we'd live in one noisy plant-filled world. Moreover, the clicks were distinct in two ways. The first is that different species of plants, such as the tobacco and tomatoes, didn't emit the same click. Or, if you will, you could identify the plant by the quality of its clicks. Different species have different voices, but also in rates of clicking. Tomatoes click more than tobacco does, since this type of clicking has also been found in cactuses, grapevines, corn, and wheat. What causes the clicking is unknown, but whatever it is, it may prove useful in the future for greenhouses, monitoring just how much to water their plants, leading to more efficient plant and water usage. Number 9. Volcanic Disruption of Satellites you would normally think that satellites in low Earth orbit would not be affected by geologic phenomena on Earth, but that's not actually the case. The Earth's atmosphere has a phenomenon known as equatorial plasma bubbles that are in areas of low pressure that rise through the atmosphere. These are formed in several ways, most commonly by the sun warming the upper atmosphere, and then when night falls, ions recombine and form the bubbles. These can adversely affect the transmission of radio satellite downlinks through the atmosphere. Scientists had long suspected that there was another way to form the bubbles, a volcanic eruption, but that had never been proven. In 2022, there was a volcanic eruption in Tonga that shot ash over 50 kilometers into the atmosphere and created tsunamis. At the same time, however, a degradation in GPS signals happened almost on the other side of the world from the eruption. Researchers have found evidence of the creation of the bubbles as pressure waves from the eruption propagated over Asia. Number 8. When low on phosphorus, turn carnivorous. Carnivorous plants are rare but known, and even cultivated by specialist plant enthusiasts. But in those cases, they tend to be carnivorous from the start, with an evolutionary adaptation for it. But a discovery regarding a type of vine from West Africa known as Trifophilium peltatatum shows that it's also possible for a plant to be a part-time carnivore when needed. This aspect was known. These plants will sometimes grow a different type of leaf than its normal non-carnivorous types that emit a sticky substance that traps insects. But no one was certain why until recently. Scientists cultivating the plants subjected them to different nutrient deficiencies. The ones that turned carnivorous were the ones specifically denied phosphorus. If they were given a phosphorus supplement, the plants returned to normal and stopped producing carnivorous leaves. This may have evolved simply because the soils in which they are native are known to become easily depleted of nutrients. Basically, it's known that the local equatorial monsoon season tends to wash out phosphorus from the soil. The strange thing here is that phosphorus is the odd man out regarding life. Most nutrients for life are abundant in the universe, but phosphorus doesn't appear to be, and it's somewhat scarce here on Earth, leading to a future agricultural phosphorus shortage as our mind sources for it deplete. So you have to ask a question, how smart would it be to genetically engineer a crop to do something similar to the West African vine, and start getting phosphorus from trapped insects? Never make the corn carnivorous. There are just too many risks. Number 7. Woolly mammoths were a lot like elephants. Mammoths have always been of great interest to me. Indeed, they are one of my favorite animals. 
The great Colombian mammoth, for example, once inhabited the area of North America where I was born, and survived so late in the geologic record, to around just 11,500 years ago, as to have interacted with the ancient Native Americans. This is unlike a dinosaur, in that this was a species that humans interacted with, and may even bring back from extinction. Its closest living relative today is the Asian elephant, and bull elephants go through a stage called the must. This is characterized by a very large rise in reproductive hormones, such as testosterone, and they can get really aggressive during this period. This actually indicates that an elephant is healthy and normal. It also causes them to lose their appetite. A male elephant can lose a thousand pounds during this cycle, but they quickly recover and it's a perfectly natural state that lasts about two to three months. At the same time, perhaps like teething or cutting wisdom teeth in humans, while fully natural, it's uncomfortable. The elephants secrete a substance called temporin from the ducts on the sides of their heads that gets into their mouth. Made of protein and lipids, but it might very well be unpleasant. But also pain which the elephants seem to react to by pushing on trees and digging their tusks into the ground. Part of why they get cranky and aggressive during this period. This may have been evolutionary useful in driving rival bulls from territory, but also favors smaller bull elephants and a better chance at dominance. As it turns out, mammoths, at least the woolly mammoth, also experienced the must. This comes from elevated testosterone found in preserved mammoth tusks. Chemical samples of mammoth DNA in tusk is easily available because in the case of the woolly mammoth, it may have only gone extinct just 3,700 years ago in some parts of the world, with another species potentially making it until 1650 BC which means that there were mammoths around a thousand years after the Giza pyramids were built, but in a different part of the world. The researchers were able to examine tusk material and determine how hormone levels had changed over time in the animal, and it looked like a modern elephant's must, whereas a female mammoth showed no change. This hammers home that elephants and mammoths were actually very closely related, both genetically and behaviorally but scary in that some of the mammoths were significantly bigger than modern elephants. Someone deep in human history once had to deal with cranky, dangerous mammoths. Number six, hunting traps were once extremely important to humans. In the 1920s, aviators flying over North Africa, the Middle East, and Central Asia noticed odd artificial structures that resembled kites on the landscape. Still known as desert kites, these structures were used to funnel animals, such as gazelles, for hunting, and many are extremely old, to the tune of 9,000 years or more. Recently, however, another aspect of the desert kites has come to light. Some of them came with instruction plans on how to build and maintain them. The find involved an unexcavated kite in Jordan that had a stone erected near it that bears an exact and to scale depiction of the kite. That these were cut into stones, the instructions were probably intended to stand for many generations, allowing new, younger hunters joining society to comprehend the function of the much larger kite itself, meaning that these are the earliest known examples of architectural plans. Number 5. Octopus Nightmares You could make the case that the closest thing to an alien intelligence on Earth is an octopus. It achieved, actually like a number of cephalopods, a level of intelligence that looks a lot like that of our land animals, which includes all sorts of interesting attributes, including problem solving, camouflage, and so on. This is interesting because it appears to be a matter of convergent evolution, where two radically separated and distant species develop the same traits because they are useful evolutionarily speaking. This is of great interest because it tells that paths to intelligence aren't limited to just one type of a group of species but happens in different evolutionary paths, which is a tick in the box for the existence of intelligent alien civilizations in the universe in that it's not a fluke, but something evolution has several different paths to do, which increases the likelihood of intelligent alien civilizations. But in the case of the octopus, they seem to have hit on something else as a matter of evolution, nightmares. This involves a remarkable octopus called Costello, that upon being taken captive by humans actually started sleeping out in the open instead of in a den. Apparently it feels safe enough to risk that, and might understand that the researchers aren't interested in eating it. The octopus while sleeping will thrash around, 
and emit ink in just such a way as octopuses do in nature when confronted by a predator. It's interesting to note that before having been captured, Costello had lost a tentacle to a predator in nature. Looking into past footage of Costello, the researchers found other incidences of apparent nightmares, that perhaps the octopus is having nightmares of its days of evading predators, something like mammals do, and we do, and the skin of an octopus changes while asleep, most of the time, but it can show different fluctuations that might indicate pleasant or neutral dreaming, and there are patterns to it, and also tentacle movement and eye movement. It's unknown what the octopus dreams are like, or if they have any sort of narrative structure, but it does seem to occur, suggesting that nightmares serve some sort of evolutionary purpose as an advantage. But what's really interesting there is a peripheral question. If very different species on Earth can have nightmares like humans, cats and dogs and very distant octopuses, then do we live in a universe of dreams? And the one thing we share with aliens might be sleep and nightmares. Number four, microbial life developments that might shed light on Mars. Mars was once a water world with flowing rivers and seas. It no longer is, it dried up. So did a former body of water in Spain known as Tierra's Lagoon. It totally dried up in 2015 and has not recovered, making it look maybe something like what Mars might have looked like during its global drying period something on the order of 3 billion years ago. The interesting result of the study of this lake bed is that while life there took a hit, the very simplest life on Earth are still holding on. Formerly moisture-loving prokaryotic life in the lagoon has apparently adapted to dry conditions, and some analog on Mars might have persisted, offering a way to search for it looking for traces of fatty acids known as lipids in Mars's geologic record. Interestingly, this also opens up the opportunity to study how life existing in the dry lagoon bed might react to the reintroduction of water. This brings into question the idea of changing environments and how life reacts, whether it adapts or goes extinct, and might yield clues as to whether microbial life could have persisted until now deep below the surface of Mars, or even the upper atmosphere of Venus. Number three. Bowhead whales are cancer resistant. There might be a reason why, so far as we know, the bowhead whale might be the longest living mammals that currently exist. Scientists think bowheads can live over 200 years. That's for a mammal though. There are clams that may live up to 500 years, and certain trees and plants can go much longer. Think about that. There are bowhead whales out there right now that might have been born before 1823 on this world. Part of the reason for the longevity of the bowhead is its resistance to cancer. This is actually paradoxical in that large animals have many more cells than small ones. So this it should be that the larger you are, the more likely you are to get cancer. But this is not so in observation. Actually, a lot of larger animals on Earth seem more cancer resistant than smaller animals. It turns out the whales may have a unique genetic makeup that allows for them to be cancer resistant. Scientists studied skin cells of various animals to see how they actually repair genetic damage that leads to some cancers. Specifically when both strands of the DNA are broken and damaged, leading to uncontrolled dangerous cell growth. It turns out that the bowhead whale is really good at repairing this kind of damage. It also seems to be related to a protein called SERP that is involved with DNA repair, which is found in higher levels in bowheads than humans. It turns out that when introduced into mice, higher levels of this protein were actually able to repair DNA twice as well as ordinary cells, leading potentially to doing the same in humans, and at least adding a tool in the kit for cancer prevention, but also might help extend human lifespans. Number two. Revenge of the Dying Star Binary star systems can get weird situationally. You can have stable binary systems that can even support habitable planets, but you can also have weird but actually rather common systems like contact binaries, where stars touch each other. If you could get in a starship and travel to such a system, you would see something very different than what we see in our sky. 
we see the sun as a round ball of nuclear fire. But in the case of a contact binary, you would see two stars so close as to resemble a single star shaped like a peanut. But sometimes under certain circumstances, it can get far more interesting. A binary system known as SN7, located in the Small Magellanic Cloud, a satellite galaxy to the Milky Way about 200,000 light years distant, hosts two giant stars, far more massive than the Sun. These stars orbit so closely that it takes about three days for them to complete an orbital cycle, and they are exchanging material through the larger star, about 55 solar masses, wrapping the other star about 32 solar masses of material. This is happening rapidly. The larger star is accumulating 13 solar masses per year, so this arrangement is not long term. In about 800,000 years, it's going to change, and the smaller star will lose enough mass, yet still retain enough mass, to collapse into a black hole. As this happens, and the expansion of the remaining larger star, will turn the tables, and the black hole will begin to feed off the larger star. Eventually, the larger star will also collapse into a black hole, and things will be set up for an eventual black hole merger and a gravitational wave signature that far future humans will detect if we're still here. Number 1. Milky Way Stars Halfway to Andromeda Defining the limits of the Milky Way galaxy is a bit ambiguous. For individual stars, it's a matter of what it's gravitationally bound to. While this can be difficult to study with regular stars, a type of variable star, known as an RR Lyrae, can provide a standard candle to astronomers to better determine distances and tell just how far the galactic halo extends, based on how faint these stars appear. In this, there were two surprises. The first is the distance to Milky Way stars in the halo is very distant, about just over a half to a million light years from the galactic center. This is consistent with modeling, which predicts stars that far out that were still gravitationally bound. This means that the Milky Way's halo stretches almost halfway to the Andromeda Galaxy, which the Milky Way in the far future is set to collide with and merge. This is interesting because Andromeda is the bigger of the two galaxies, and might perhaps have an even larger halo, opening the question as to whether we are already in the earliest stages of the collision. The other surprise was that researchers found more RR Lyrae stars at this distance than what was predicted which is that the distance that astronomers had predicted for when the Milky Way star population dramatically declines may be further out than we thought. This would mean that there are already stars being gravitationally tugged, and possibly even exchanged between the two galaxies. And then there's the question of materials. Is the Milky Way galaxy already capturing asteroids, meteorites, and maybe rogue planets? Of not just an interstellar nature, but an intergalactic one. Thanks for listening. I'm futurist and science fiction author John Michael Godier, and be sure to check out my books at your favorite online book retailer and subscribe to my channels for regular in-depth explorations into the interesting, weird, and unknown aspects of this amazing universe in which we live.